Hello, and today's video we're gonna be looking at my new camera because I've built the ultimate food, still life, product photography sort of beast. And I wanna to talk to you about it, I wanna talk to you about what I've bought, why I've bought it, what it does that my old camera didn't do, and all of that sort of thing. Now, although this is the ultimate camera for me, this is probably not going to be the ultimate camera for you. It is also not the best camera, there is a better version of this, um, which we'll get to at the end, but my pockets aren't running that deep today. Now, fundamentally, this camera is still my 5DSR, which as far as I'm concerned, is the best studio camera. I've looked at other ones, I've tried other ones, but this is still my preferred body in terms of color accuracy, color science, and resolution. This is what I like to use. It's also the usability, the functionality. This just does everything I need the best without going into medium format backs. But this has now become a digital back as such. The only things it controls is the shutter speed, which is always 125th in my studio, and my ISO, which is always 100th. That's all it does. Everything else within this camera now is redundant. None of the other features do anything. And that is because I have purchased a cambo, and that is this chunk here. So first of all, let's look at the bellows. And the bellows would allow us to focus and keep the light all trapped inside. Um, the magnetic on this system here, so here's my old Canon, and here's my lens. Here is all of the movements, and this bit here brings the two together. Now I'm gonna do an entire video on how to focus these cameras and all the rest of it. Let's try and snap that back into place. There we go. But yeah, there we go. So that's this part. At the front here, we have a Mamiya Secor lens. This is a 50 millimeter f4.5. Even though it's a medium format lens, it's still a 50 millimeter because it's all relative to the sensor size. The image circle that this lens produces is huge. It's for a six by seven camera. So it'd be like putting a full frame camera on an iPhone. We are only going to be using the very center of this, which is also the very best of it for what I do. Now, if I wanted to shoot those ooey gooey cookbook style photographs, I would want that fall off of focus and that fall off of light and that natural vignetting. That's a pleasing thing for that sort of work. But for the vibrant sort of style of work and the sort of graphic and pop art work that I do, that is not what I want. So I want that corner to corner sharpness, which is why up until now, I've shot with the Zeiss Milvers lenses. But they had a drawback for me, and the drawback was this. I couldn't get enough in focus unless I was shooting top down or focus stacking. And the focus stacking was just hundreds of images to get anything sort of vaguely sharp. And it doesn't look that great and it goes wrong and it's time consuming. And this fixes that. This means that at F10, at any angle, I can get everything or whatever I choose in focus. Now the focusing itself is pretty simple. It's just a bellows rail system here, and that's your front and back focus. And this is basically what any Canon, Nikon, Sony, any camera you've probably used before does. It has a few other bits. You can lift the camera up and drop it down. And that's to help with your lines, keeping them straight when you're looking up and down, but also if you want to create stacked images, panoramic images and that sort of thing. And then we have a left and right shift on the back here as well, which just lets you move the camera. So you can also fine tune your composition. And that's important to me because on one of these big stands, you can't move a millimeter to the left, you sort of move an inch. And this here just lets you get near enough and then you can fine tune where the camera sits. And because the, the image circle from the lens is so big, you're still gonna get a very sharp image. But the reason I got this, now I've been using tilt shift lenses for years and they're good, but they're not great. They have very limited movement, they're fiddly, they sometimes slip. And this here has a huge, I'm not sure if you can see this, amount of swing. This lens can move from left to right, and then we can tilt it up and down like so to huge amounts and lock it in place. And this allows me to implement something called the Schimpfling principle, which is where I get to change the plane of focus. So instead of it going like this, it kind of goes like this. And that for me is very useful. I've just done a whole new body of work, which is going out to all the ad agencies soon on ice lollies, because we've just had a heat wave in the UK. And having this let me create some images that I physically couldn't create before. Now there are some drawbacks to this. One is that the lenses, you'll see this bit of gaff tape here. I have to tape this bit in place to keep the aperture blades because there's no communication from here to here. It is all manual. But the positive to that is when I'm shooting my stop motion videos, my time lapses, I don't have to worry about the flicker you get from the shutter blades opening and closing because it's a manual stop down lens and once you've put the aperture in place, it just stays there. The lenses are also of extremely good quality. 
these easily outperform the Zeiss Milvus that I have, which was incredibly expensive, and for the price of one Zeiss Milvus, I could get three of these. Now, I'm pretty happy with my purchase so far. This is the Cambo Actus and the Cambo ball head, and it just works for me. I've then rigged up my Canon with a tether tools cable and a jerk stopper here. We've then got mains power to the actual camera, which goes to my tether trolley, and then a PC sync cable to sync to my packs. Um, mostly because someone in here is doing something with wireless something upstairs, and it often creates a few issues, and I like to know that my flash will fire when I press the trigger. I've also got a remote trigger so that when this is out of the way, I can just press this button back here on my stand, or I can fire it directly from Capture One or from the Capture One app. Just gives you those extra options, or if your assistant needs to take a quick test shot for whatever reason, they can just press a button on the stand without knocking the camera and ruining the time I've spent focusing. Now, although there's gonna be some images popping up throughout this video that I've shot with this, I will do a video about how to focus it and what it can do and how the shimfling principle works because there's not a great deal of interesting stuff out there on it. Um, there are some good videos if you're into techie bits, but I wanna sort of show you the creative side of it and what it can do. Now, this may be the right camera for you as well, and they are reasonably affordable. I think the Bellow system's about 1,500 pounds, so you need your lenses and all the rest of it, but it's not stupid money. If I had enough money, or more to the point, if I felt secure enough in the economy at the moment, spend enough money to buy the best camera, the absolute best, it would be a phase one back, the 150 megapixel on a Sinar body with a Sinar digital lens. But that is gonna cost me an obscene amount of money. I could buy a house for the same money. Um, so for the time being, this, this is my compromise until I know for sure that this is the direction I want to go in and that this does allow me to create the work that I want to create. At the end of the day, this is just a tool it doesn't do anything special. I will be selling all my Canon lenses apart from the 35mm that I use for the YouTube videos, um, which is quite a big commitment for me because I've shot with Canon for 15 years and those sorts, not even the brand Canon. Is, that, the, the brand is not the commitment to me. The commitment is the, the SLR system. Um, and moving away from that to a more technical camera is a big change and it sort of closes doors for me, but that shouldn't matter because my work is so niche anyway. What pays the bills is a very small subsect of photography, as it is with any professional photography who works at a certain level. Anyway, so this is my new camera. I need a name for it, so do put name suggestions in the comments below because I feel that this is more of a beautiful camera than just the Canon DSLR system or SLR system, whatever you want to call it. It has a little bit more to it. The lenses have a bit more, the way they draw images is a bit more beautiful. It just feels nice using all of these mechanical dials and switches and you know you can rotate the camera from the back. So it's almost like the old RZ and RB rotating back cameras so I can get the shot and just don't have to worry about moving the tripod or just flick the sensor around in the back. And for me, the Canon RZ and RB systems with their rotating backs were the best medium format cameras ever. And I think that Phase and Hasselblad should implement that rotating back thing because it is so good just to leave your camera set like this and just to move the back alone into portrait and landscape. It is so convenient and it seems to have been left behind. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. If you wanna know more about commercial photography and the industry of commercial photography, then do hit subscribe and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.